Now, so ladies, if anyone doesn't want to be on the recording, I think you all look beautiful, but just in case you can switch off your camera, but you don't have to, you all look great. So Sara, what, what are you going to say? I was gonna tell them that a uh, beautiful um, two of our police advisors in the community, and this is why I love the Thermomix community, uh, Margena and uh, Ursula share with us the tip. They were the ones that they gave us the idea of showing you today that while someone, your loved one is cooking for you in this day off that you are taking, you can go and pamper yourself. And the uh, great thing of the scrub, I was using it earlier, okay? A very small amount. And as Cecilia said on the chat, it's not a cream, it's more like a scrub. And you will notice the coffee uh, beans, the coffee grain, the grain that you're gonna use, the little bit, that will make it, you know, very good on the skin. I left it for five minutes and it got really, really dry and the skin was quite uh, tense, if you want to say it, you know, uh, tight. And then just with a bit of water, it was able to remove it. Look, we have Margena on the chat. Margena, give us tips or come on the camera if you feel comfortable. Tell us one tip that we should tell everybody and share with them because at the end, this is your recipe. So tell us more about it. <laughs> oh hi everyone! Uh, yeah, the scrub is actually amazing. Uh, I I did the few times, and always I have a smell in the kitchen and the smell <laughs> under the shower actually. <laughs> yeah, and the skin is very very gently after the use. So yeah, everyone in, everyone needs to uh, try these recipes. Also, uh, also I think the Sarah and the Desire has a. A recipe for uh, bad balls so it's actually the same amazing so yeah the thermomix uh, is not only for the food actually <laughs> yeah, and you this one actually you could eat it because all it has yes. is coffee chocolate exactly. and, uh, yeah. and, the, and the orange one thing and i orange. say okay this maria made the full amount i made yeah. half of the amount that margena and gave us in the recipe, okay? So remember, it's very easy to adapt your own recipes. In this case, by reducing the amount, didn't mean I had to reduce the time. I cooked the exact same time, the blending and the speed. But mind yourself when you are doing recipes, double the amount or, that, or half the amount doesn't mean half the time, okay? Keep that in mind. Thank you, Sarah. Martina, can I ask you, how long does it last in the fridge? Uh, Two days because, <laughs> because I you use, use it all the time. Yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. But actually, okay. but actually I think I think three, four days, five, because it's uh, orange inside, so yeah. it's not too long. Thank you. Okay. So you look at my bowl after doing this day of this crop, everything is stuck on the blades. So a little trick to clean those blades when you're doing pesto or something like a cake. Not to waste anything because the thermomix you don't waste anything. You put it back onto your thermomix, you go to turbo, and you turbo for one second. That's all that you need. And the speed rotates so fast that everything that is in the place will go on the walls of the bowl, and you will be able to clean everything much easier. So I forgot to press it here. So I'm going to show you now. So I know that because this is what done, but my place are completely clean. And then very easily with a spatula, you can collect everything that is on the board. So it's an easier way to clean it, and you're not wasting anything of nice, nice things that you make in the thermomix, okay? Thank you. Well, it's fantastic. Heidi is already saying she's going to make it for her mother-in-law. She's going to love it. What a great present, Heidi. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, Sada. my uh, yeah. risotto is nearly ready. Uh, I just need to add 60 grams of wine. Okay. So white wine, or if you don't want wine because maybe you prefer to have an alcohol-free uh, risotto if the kids are eating it, even though it will um, evaporate during the, the cooking time, but maybe you might prefer to use water in that case. And without the measuring cup, that's why it's going to evaporate. What I'm going to do now is for the next for one minute at a speed one. Okay, in the meantime, I can show something of my future recipe. So I'm going to make an amazing chocolate cake and chocolate frosting. Now, that's not something particularly different. Like there are loads of recipes of chocolate cake out there, but mine is low carb because it's keto. So I will be going more into that later, but what I want to show you first of all is 
I'm going to adapt an American recipe that I have found on the internet, okay? So this is a good lesson on how to adapt recipes and how to adapt measurements. So this recipe that I have is in cups and ounces. So how can I do that on my Thermomix? Well, if you go to menu and then settings, there is an option if you keep scrolling down, which is system of measurement. So by default, because we are in Europe, we have metric, but you can actually put it in imperial. So when you have it in imperial, that means that now when I'm going to use, I have Fahrenheit degrees. And if I bring up my scales, my scales are going to be in ounces, not in grams. So I will explain more about that later. I think Sarah, you are ready for your next step? Yeah, all I'm doing, so the white is uh, the white wine is in. I'm just gonna add 500 grams of water. And again, with rice, make sure that you put the correct amount. Otherwise it might be a little bit watery. Um, so it's one of the things I tend to be very, very precise. The rest of the ingredients doesn't really matter. But with this one, yeah. And it's asking me for a fantastic, and if you saw the Facebook Live that today and me did last week, how to make your own stock cube. So I made it as well. And look, you can see I'm nearly running out of it. So I'll be making more in the morning. Uh, we make our own stock cube, the vegetable one, the Cire. Do you want to share the tips you gave? Because I thought they were fantastic, actually, <laughs> how easy it is and so cheap. It's a, it's a very good tip for a woman's night like this and uh, for a Friday night. And is if you don't have, I was going to say that to you before, Sarah, if you don't have white wine or if you have a big bottle and you don't want to open it, use any clear liquor you have. I put rum in my stock face. It's great. I love it. And tequila. <laughs> you put tequila. Last week you oh, yeah. put tequila. This is tequila. Yeah, I put tequila, but sometimes I put rum. You know, whatever. You know, everybody has in their in their cabinet a bottles of spirits that you have like half of it left. Or you use it for Christmas or you use it for cocktails once in a blue moon now not a lot because you we don't even have people over so use the liquor do, use the spirits if you uh, don't have white wine handy i use it in my risotto too that's why we're so happy all the time at home <laughs> <laughs> but one thing i love about what the cd was sharing the other days it was using the peels of only of uh carrot or uh courgette she froze them and when she has enough she uses that for her uh, vegetable stock base and all it is is 99.9% .9 of vegetables a bit of water tequila if you put tequila like this today or wine and salt and it's a fantastic way if you look at the one in the shop it only has 4.5% of vegetables so again knowing exactly what you eat with your thermomix so I have put that I'm gonna put 20 grams of tomato puree and the last ingredient I think it is is a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper. So now it's going to be cooking. This time is with the measuring cup on. So every time the recipe will tell you if it's on or off. In this case, the measuring cup is on. For the next 12 minutes, my risotto is going to be cooking. So I let you decide to show them what a beautiful keto chocolate cake you have prepared for them. Yes. I'm coming. I, I, just, I, just, I was just looking for the link of how do you make. There you go. You have it now in the chat, ladies. How to make stock paste out of frozen fillings. I'm not sure about. Yeah. Okay. So you have it there if you want to try the recipe. Lovely. So I'm here. I'm with my Thermomix. And a little tip for all of you. If you ever have to make a cake that has an icing, like this one that I'm going to make now, or for example, the famous carrot cake. It's a little bit annoying sometimes, uh, not particularly with Thermomix, with any mixer, that you make the cake mixture, you put it in the oven, and now you need to clean the bowl of anything, also of the Thermomix, to make the icing. So something that I do all the time, because uh, you know I just like to save time and energy and washing up, I do it the other way around. Anytime that I make a cake, I always, always make the icing first, the icing of frosting first. Put it in a bowl, put it in the fridge because you don't want it to get any heat because then it could melt. And then I make the cake mixture after. Why is that? Because then I don't need to wash the bowl. By the way, you can see it obviously, but my oven is already preheating at 180 degrees 
Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit, like the recipe that I'm going to follow. So I'm going to start by making this amazing frosting. So I said at the beginning that this is a low carb, keto friendly recipe. Why is that? As you know, to make a nice frosting or icing, you need ice and sugar. So what am I going to use? This, have you ever seen it? It's called Silito. A few months ago, a year ago, uh, you needed to go to a health shop to find this. Now, to be honest, it's in any supermarket. You can find it in Tesco, in dance stores. And what is it? I mean, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to give anyone a, a, di a diet or a nutritionist um, speech because I'm not a nutritionist. But what I do know is that if you look at the um, nutritional, nutritional values of Silitol or Erythritol, which is a different one, it has um 9.6 kilocalories per four gram or 240 kilocalories every 100 grams which is ridiculously low the reason why it looks like sugar as you can see but it's an it's called an alcoholic sugar that's why it's low in um carbs so i'm going to be using as the recipe says here i need one and a half cups of powdered sugar. How do I do that in my thermomix? Let me change my camera so I can show you what's going on in here. I'm going to zero it. So when I change to the imperial um, metric system, sorry, to the imperial measurement system, it's going to, the thermomix is going to measure everything in ounces. I know that one cup is eight ounces and I need one and a half. So I'm going to put 10 ounces of silicone. Ten and point three. Now, this is the sugar I need for my icing. For my cake, I need a third of a cup, which is roughly two and a half ounces. So I'm going to add it already here, and I'm going to do all the icing sugar or silicone in one go. So I'm going to add to this, I'm going to go up to uh, 13, 13 ounces. There you go. Okay, so how do we turn granulated sugar or granulated silitol or any other sweetener into icing? I'm going to actually show you how it looks right now. So this looks like any normal granulated sugar. It's quite thick. To turn it into icing, I'm going to go to the maximum speed, which is speed 10, 10,000 revolutions per minute for 20 seconds. Now, while I'm doing this, this 20 seconds, you're not going to, uh, to hear a lot of noise because Zoom blocks the high noises. So ladies, Maria and Sara, if you want to say anything in these 20 seconds, say something. So how is everybody finding it so far? Is there any questions? If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and just ask. Yeah. You have 30 seconds. <laughs> Maybe we'll ask them who has made in the thermomix something like that, like the, the coffee scrub that uh, Maria made. Like one of the things I love was that it's made for everything natural. Um, so now we have to say it, we are advisors, we are independent from thermomix. But one of the things to keep in mind is if you don't cook food in your thermomix, that could have a, an impact on your warranty, okay? So keep that in mind if you're making certain recipes that you're, uh, if you can use whatever you want, but keep that in mind that it could impact your warranty if you don't use food in the thermomix. Yes, that's why we share with you this uh, coffee scrub recipe because everything that you're using in there is edible. You could actually eat it if you want it. It's just about, especially using any, um, like dangerous chemicals and things like that, especially also for our own safety. Okay, so this is all the sugar at Silitol that I'm using for this um, cake and frosting. Now I need um, half a cup of cocoa powder, which is roughly four ounces. Now I have now learned that the cocoa powder that you buy in the supermarket is full of sugar and flour. And we don't want that because it's keto. So I'm going to make my own cocoa powder. How do I do that? Well, I have here lovely 70% chocolate. You can also use 85% if you wish. I want my children to eat it. So I'm not going to make it too bitter. And I'm going to just put four ounces in my thermomix. So I'm going to bring up my scales again. Okay. 
worried now that I'm not going to have enough. Oof, just about. One second, I have more here. Oh no, yeah, I want to show you this. Something that I'm using as well a lot lately is this cacao nibs. So this, has, this is basically the kind of um, primer material where the cacao butter uh, comes from. Uh, they have, I, I bought this as you can see by the packaging Aldi. This is how it looks. You can't put it in a cake because it's too thick. So you, you can actually make it powder together with the chocolate. It's a little bit bitter. So if you want your children to eat the cake, you maybe don't want to put everything uh, cocoa, um, cacao nibs. I, tend, I mix it with chocolate. So to go up to the four ounces that I need, I'm going to just put here. There you go, four ounces. And now, same story, I'm going to powder this and make my own cocoa powder. So for that, again, I'm going to go up I wouldn't go up to speed 10 because there is also a, um, what's the name, cocoa butter in these chocolate bars and it could melt. So I will go only up to speed eight for about eight seconds. Don't worry about this. You will receive the recipe later because it's not on cookie dough. Remember, this is my own adaptation. So what do I have here? Beautiful, 70%. It's a mixture of 70% and cacao meat. Oops, one second. My tripod is going to leave me, so. Cocoa powder, not the one that you buy that is full of sugar and flour. So I have already my two main ingredients for my frosting. So what else do I need? I need eight ounces of cream cheese. So again, I'm going to bring my scales on. But in my house, we love mascarpone. So I'm using this beautiful mascarpone cheese. I think the one from Tesco. So I need, as I said, eight ounces. By the way, it's possible. There you go, 8.4. The more the merrier, for good measure. This recipe is, it can be made easily vegan because you can use vegan um, cream cheese, okay? So I have here my eight ounces of mascarpone. Then I need a quarter of a cup of butter or vegan butter. So a quarter of a cup is roughly two ounces. So my butter is here. There you go. Like I have to give you credit, Desiree, you are the best one at adapting recipes that I have ever met with the thermos. I love how you always find a way to solve it, to add it, reduce whatever it is. No problem at all. Normally it's out of desperation, Sara, as you very well know. <laughs> yeah, but it shows like, you know, sometimes people, when they get the thermos, they use cookie dough and I love using cookie dough, it's really helpful. But guys, don't be afraid to also try experiment. You've seen it. We do it in the classes a lot. And it's because we want to inspire you as well to try it. Sometimes the fear of making it wrong. Well, look, you know, you try once. Just make sure you take note of what you are doing when you're adapting the recipe. Otherwise, you're eating a beautiful cake. And then when you, you need to go back to make it again, you cannot remember what you did. And that has happened to all of us. I think, Maria, did that happen to you as well? <laughs> yeah, and to me. So I put four tablespoons of milk. I'm going to now put half of a teaspoon of vanilla essence. So let's recap. I have here a whole top of mascarpone, two ounces of uh, butter. Then I have four tablespoons of milk. You can also use plant-based milk if you are vegan. Some vanilla extract. And now I'm going to add back. Remember, I need it. What is it again, my sugar? Uh, oh, here. I needed one and a half cups, which is 10 ounces. So not all the sugar that I had before. Well, remember, it's not sugar. It's actually silitol. Because I want to save some of that sugar or silitol for my cake. Because this is the frosting. Do you remember? So about 10. 
There you go. So I still have some left for my cake later. And now I'm going to add back my cocoa powder, which is half a cup, which is roughly four ounces. There you go. Lovely, so all our ingredients are in. How do I turn this into some lovely frosting? So let me show you what I have here. I always like to show the, the before and the, or, and the after. So everything is here, very roughly mixed. So I'm going to mix this 30 seconds, speed six. In the meantime, Desiree, in my risotto is done and he's asking me for 40 grams of unsalted butter. I find 40 grams way too much. So I'm just going to put 20 and let it settle for a few seconds while you finish the frosting, okay? Actually, 30 seconds was a bit too much. 20 is enough. So I'll show you how the frosting... Sorry, Sarah, you were saying something, didn't you? What did you say? Yeah, I added the butter to my risotto. So now we oh. need to let it settle and maybe a very gentle stir with the spatula. And then I'll add as well the Parmesan cheese and my risotto is ready for your beautiful dinner. So you can finish beautifying yourself because you're going to be serving, your, your dinner is going to be served soon. Very good. So I have learned something, ladies and gentlemen. No, only ladies. And is that this lovely, <laughs> you see that I love this, we're all learning together. So these lovely cacao nibs, when you mill them and you make them in the, into power, they are not the color of chocolate. They are quite white. So my frosting looks nice and creamy, but it doesn't look very chocolatey. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be icing my cake with this later and we'll let you know how it turns. So can you put a little bit of very... powder? Can you put a little bit of cocoa powder to run it through? I'll, I'll try. <laughs> I need to make the cake now. But anyways, if you want your frosting or your cake to look very, very chocolatey, don't use cacao nibs because they turn white when you mill them, okay? So in a normal world, I will be taking my frosting out of my Thermomix bowl, put it somewhere else, keep it in the fridge, and without washing the bowl, I will be making my cake mixture. In the interest of time, I'm going to leave this and put it to a side. Then I'm going to put a clean bowl that I have here. Before I start making the cake mixture, anyone needs to say anything, Sarah or Maria? Uh, do you want me to start with my recipe, my new recipe? With the cocktail? Yes. Maybe when once uh, I'm doing the first step of the cake. Okay, so I'm going just to explain how the recipe is here. So the recipes that we have done so far are some of our creations, except for the risotto that Sarah is doing that is in Cookie Do. My recipe is also in Cookie Do. And uh, there are so many things there for you to choose that I find that you have to be a little bit organized because when I'm bored, I'm looking at what things can I, can I do at the weekend or next day for dinner or something nice. So what I have done is I, in the Cookie Do app, you can create folders. And that's what I have here. I have folders with different things. So for the recipe that I will be doing in a minute, I'm looking for my folder that is for drinks. So I go there, there are a few, not all are cold. You can have as well mocktails and you can have also coffees, okay? And then I have in here my cocktail that is called Roses with Love. So while someone else is doing the dinner for you, you can have your aperitif as a cocktail. So that's what I'm going to be doing in a minute. So I pass it on back to the studio. Thank you, Maria. So my cake, again, is keto-friendly. So it's low carb. So instead of flour, we're, we're, we're going to use ground almonds. But instead of buying almond flour, that you can buy it, but it's more expensive. And over time, it loses a bit of freshness and flavor. We're going to mill our own almonds. So I need one and a half cups of ground almonds. So that is roughly eight ounces. Some of my almonds are blanched. 
Some of my almonds are not. These ones have the skin on. So I'm going to add them until I reach 10. There you go. And I'm going to turn them into almond flour or ground almonds by kneading these almonds for 10 seconds. Speed, 10. 10 seconds, speed 10. And these are my beautiful, freshly um, ground almonds. You see, my spatula now is dirty from the icing. So I'm using a normal one. So let me take it out for a second because I want to show you how it looks. It's actually nicer like this because, as I said, some of the almonds or half of the almonds that I use have the skin on. So they have a more special flavor. Uh, if I wouldn't have done my icing sugar or silitol earlier, I would have done that before the almonds. So that's my first ingredient for my keto chocolate cake. Also, I need more cocoa powder, which is roughly two more ounces that I could have done before as well. There you go. So now I'm using 70% chocolate again. And I'm going to turn this into cocoa powder, just 10 seconds. I speed 10. The 10 seconds of speed 10 is good for nearly everything when you're baking or making flour. I want to thing that the Sire just said, okay, for those of you that want to adapt your own recipes. Look at the full recipe and then start cooking because for example, for the icing and for the cakes, you needed both the chocolate or uh, ground in the sugar. So maybe you can do it all at once at the start and you have everything ready in case that you only have a bowl and you cannot be going from one to the other like Desiree is doing tonight. Yes. So I'm adding now my lovely ground almonds, my icing silicone that I did at the beginning, I need also three eggs. For vegan people, you can use, for example, um, soaked chia seeds because they get that texture. And that was the word, um, oh, I have forgotten that word. It's a, it had, they have the quality of putting everything together, amalgamate. Bounding, so, isn't it? Binding? Binding. Thank you so much. Binding. Yes, it has binding. A, a third of a cup of water, plant-based uh, milk or normal milk. So a third of a cup is two ounces. There you go. Some baking powder. Actually, in this recipe is quite a lot of baking powder because almond flour doesn't raise as much, so it needs more help. So it's two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. And some salt, a pinch of salt to interact with the baking powder. And if you want a bit of vanilla extract, but this is optional. And how do you mix a cake? Always the same. Thirty seconds and speed six. And in these thirty seconds, ladies, if you want to continue with any of your recipes, feel free. I'll just okay. show them how to take off the risotto. And Maria, you jump. Okay. okay. Go, go for it. I'll. I'll they, they'll be able to see my cameras. Okay, so my next recipe is going to be the cocktail. As I said, to spoil yourself, I got all the nice recipes tonight. I want to beautify myself to look uh, much younger and better. And then something to make me happy, my cocktail. 
So this one is called Roses with Love. And you're going to understand now why it's called like that. So we go to the next, my the recipe. And it's asked for 250 grams of fresh uh, strawberries. You just clean them and cut them in pieces. I will put them in. Okay. Then we are going to add, you can use like a, like a sparkling wine. So we are going to add just 370 grams, 375 grams of sparkling wine. So here we go. I think my neighbors who are on the call can call later and help me to drink this. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't think I will survive. I'm not able anymore. So then what is telling me is to put the cup, the lid on, we go next, and we are going to blend all this for 50 seconds at speed seven. 15 seconds. <laughs> Okay, that's next. Then it says we are going to add the next of 375, another 375 uh, of our sparkling wine. So we go again. There's really the rest of the rest of the bottle. Here it goes. So then we go next, and we have to add ice cubes. And I made the mistake of putting them back in the fridge so they are all together. One minute. I need to get there. I know the last thing today. So let me show you. That's my risotto. And you can see I have here a risotto for a week. <laughs> there is at least six portions. Okay. So it's a very good uh, dish that if you have a big family, you can do it. If you were to reduce it, again, be careful not reducing the amounts by half. You need to reduce the quantities by half. You have the ice cubes there, Maria. They're really good. <laughs> Sorry, I, they kept together. That's the problem of the live TV. What can I say? So I have put my six ice cubes in here and I'm going to go next. Oh, sorry. And then it tells me, and that's why it's called roses. I'm using, as I said before, rose water. Just to give it a little bit of a flavor. So it says half of a spoon. So I'm just going to put the top. Nice it's optional, but it gives a nice flavor. And then we put it together again. That goes on. And we're going to mix all this for three seconds at the speed seven again. And that's done. So meanwhile, I prepare the glasses because this is the end of my cocktail. It says divided in eight glasses. So that's why I'm going to need help to drink this. Someone else can continue with the recipe, okay? Yes. Well, I only have to say something. It's five to eight. Like we promised it was going to be in, a, in one hour. And look at us, we are nearly there. And we have been speaking a lot in between. Uh, my cake is ready to go in the oven. You can see the color is very chocolatey looking. Uh, Remember, no flour, no normal sugar. Uh, this is an eight inches, eight inch uh, a spring form um, thing. And I put water, uh, butter all over the place. So it's going to go into my preheated oven at 180 degrees. Give me one second. And because of the magic of television, the cake is already done. Yes, we're going to be eating lots of cake this weekend. <laughs> Somebody come and help me, please. <laughs> I change risotto for cake. <laughs> we can do a swap. We can do a swap, Sara. <laughs> so as you can imagine, this, oh, Maria, please show us. Okay. I, I want one of those two. Yes. So you have roses in here because you have the water roses, the rose water, you also have the strawberry. And then the final touch is you just put a little bit of top of it. Dry roses on top. So it looks really cool. Wow. So, when did you buy that, Maria? Maria. So when the lockdown is over, I can open a cocktail place. <laughs> That's fantastic. Fantastic. I love it. So this mm -hmm. cake I, I baked it earlier is real. I'll, I'll show you now before that slice because you know you, you might think that's cardboard. She bought it in the in the shop. No, I made it. 
And now I'm going to use that icing. So I have to say something. I have made this cake before many times. The reason why I have made this cake tonight is because it's a cake that normally my husband makes, which is the idea that you get, you know, the husbands, the children, you know, somebody that is not you. But we have made it in the past with more chocolate. So the icing had normally looked more browner. But anyways, we will, we will manage what we have. So this is my icing that looks a little bit white. I apologize. So let's ice the cake. So I'm just going to pour it on top. Extend it a little bit. Something else you can do, but I don't want to do that on camera because it's, I, it's not my forte and I don't want to mess up. But something you can do is actually, you can cut it obviously in half and put some icing in the middle because to be honest, there is a lot of icing here. It, it suits me today because I have another cake now in the oven so I can, I can ice both. But if you're only making one cake, you can either use half of the amount of ingredients or even nicer, just half your cake and put this icing in between. To be honest, what I'm going to do today, because I, I have used actually the, exactly the same, uh, what's the name, thing to make both cakes. I'm going to make a sandwich cake and the new one, once it's cooled down, I'm going to put it on top of this. So it's going to be a very high cake. So you can just ice it like this. Or if you wish, you can also ice it on the sides or, you know, that's the new, I'm not an expert at all, but that's the, the new kind of fashion, which is to put icing kind of like on the edge and let it like, let's see if I can do that. I'm trying to be very modern and I'm going to mess up. You know, that's the new kind of fashion that you kind of let it, there you go, drip over the sides. Isn't that very fancy at the moment? So that's something else you can do. Because you know, this icing, it has a lovely, lovely consistency, but also is, you know, quite pliable. So that's my cake, that's my icing. Remember, don't use cacao nibs if you don't want your icing to look this white. Here we go. Keto chocolate cake and icing. <laughs> so before we let you go back to your Friday night, I'm not monitoring the chat now. Are you Sarah? Oh my goodness. I, I just oh. answered a few questions. Uh, Mar Mariana was asking what is the name of the recipe. So I sent the um, recipe that uh, Maria just made. It's called Roses with Love. It's in the Cookie Do collection called Summer Cocktail Collection. So if everybody wants to start looking at, you know, getting ready for the summer, maybe the body, but also new recipes and new ideas, have a look at that. And oh, Susan is asking me as well for the uh, risotto. Can I use olive oil instead of butter? That's a good question. Um, I have never done it, but one thing I would say, I think the creamy part of the butter makes the uh, risotto so nice. And I will be the, the word creamy, I suppose, when you are eating the risotto. If you added the oil, I think it would be a little bit too oily because the rice will not take the oil that way. What would you, Maria, let's see they said to that yeah. question. I said yeah, the same, the oil will, will be kind of a oil over, the same as when you put, uh, the same as if you do a basic, basic paste and you want to put a little bit over oil, it will just float above. So I say it's the kind of butter. Yeah. You can reduce the amount of butter anyway, as Sarah did, yeah. just put it it's very little. Or not even add it. The only thing is you don't add it, one of the, I think, yeah. uh, factors of the risotto is that creaminess and it's because of that last step with the butter. I only added 20. Uh, sometimes I even only add 10, but I do add a little bit. Uh, Helen yes. is saying as well. She made the risotto with 10 grams of butter. Yeah. That thank, you, Helen, thank, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. You're in, yeah. control. you're in control of the recipe. So if there is something that you don't like, don't put it on. If there is something that you think is too much, like olive oil, salt, things like that, just reduce the amount. That's no problem. You're in control. Yeah. Yes, I and something that, that I was anyway. going to say, I would personally, if you don't like the, the butter or the taste of butter, or you can't have butter because you have a, a dietary restriction, uh, just don't put anything because the risotto is going to be kind of like buttery enough. Um, and if you are worried about the calories, for example, of the butter, think about this. This, like, Can you show again, please, Sarah, the amount of risotto that you have made? Like, it's a lot. You, get, you get six portions of risotto. So you, if you divide, the 20 grams of butter among six to eight uh, portions, 
then you end up having like five grams of butter or less each. So, you know, it's not really a big deal. I have here the recipe actually. And if I go and I look at the number of portions, it says four portions, but I have to say they are very big, big portions. portions yes. And when I look at in cookie dough or on my thermomix, the nutritional values per portion, in this case, the calories is 556 calories with all the butter and fat is 26 grams. So keep that in mind when you're making this recipe. If you want to cut calories, cut the wine, cut the, uh, probably the, um, look, I didn't use all the cheese either. I left a little bit for serving it later. So that's a good thing as well to keep in mind if you want to reduce the calories that you are intaking. Brilliant. So ladies, if you don't have any other question, the last thing we wanted to say tonight, and I think you have seen it on social media, is this month, because there are so many women-related events, there is the uh, Wolves, the Women's, goodness me, what's the name of it? International Women's Day on Monday. On, the on Monday, and then uh, is Mother's Day. So because of that, uh, Thermomix UK in Ireland uh, is sponsoring one chosen charity, which is Women's Aid. That is, that is both in UK and Ireland. The website in Ireland is womensaid.ie, which actually, um, not maybe on the chat because we'll be finishing the session, um, but we can um, send it later together with the recipes. Um, so... By the way, Thermomix UK and Ireland is raffling one brand new Thermomix TM6. To enter that raffle, you need to make a five euro uh, donation on that website, womensaid.ie. And then on the official post launching that raffle on Facebook or Instagram, you need to write hashtag, and I have forgotten now what it was. We'll send it to them. We'll send it to them. Yeah, like send it to Anyways, yeah. we will send you all the information, but I, we just want to take this opportunity to remind you because once, the, obviously the main reason is a brilliant um, initiative and charity, and there is been an increase of cases of uh, domestic violence during the lockdown, because obviously people can get out less. Um, so it's a brilliant initiative. The donation doesn't have to be five euro. It can be five, a minimum of five. And also you get to enter this amazing raffle. And continue yeah. with the uh, theme of women and mothers. Uh, we have um, Thermomix UK and Ireland has launched um, a new winning set and a new book that is called Love at First Bite. If you want more information on how to get your hands on a copy of that, please contact your advisor or any of us if you don't have an advisor. There you go. Give a lifeline. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Can you see how prepared we are, Maria? <laughs> Luckily, we have somebody here that knows her stuff. <laughs> so this was my, my last note. Remember, if you want to know more about what you need to do to know more about Thermomix, to get a Thermomix, or the new baby book, Love at First Bite, or the winning set that comes together with it, please ask your advisor. And before I go, something else. Those of you who, who have a cookie do subscription, have a look, because just two days ago, the collection, the Love at First Bite collection, was launched in cookie do with 60 amazing recipes and don't don't be prejudiced it's not about you don't need to be a baby or to have a baby many of the recipes are fantastic for a family thank you so uh, ladies sarah maria and um, me do you mind to kind of do this with your food and we can take a screenshot Hello, i was I gonna do it because we always forget maria don't forget oops i'm here can you see me yeah. Don't, Maria, don't forget that I live within your five kilometers. So, you know, you <laughs> might be ringing right, right. the, the bell. If you need to run faster than you, you might get something. Okay, smile. Cheers. Lovely. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, and I will stay in contact soon. Thank you. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.